All right, good Saturday afternoon, a Saturday in February. Here for today's action between the visiting Point Park University and the MVNU Cougars, Point Park, coming into this game five and six. Overall, two and six on the road. MVNU six and eight overall and three and four at home. And this game was scheduled just a couple of days ago as originally Mount Vernon was supposed to play Spring Arbor at home, but due to COVID-19 protocols, that game was canceled and Point Park was able to play today. And that's where we are in terms of MVNU sports. And boy, when, when you talk about today's game, especially for MVNU, you have a, a couple of key players that I think is, is going to be really, really interesting. Of course, I mean, he's been talked about the whole entire season, Mr. Knox County, number four, Jevin Knox, who's averaging 20 points a game. He, he had 31 points, which was a career high against Taylor on Wednesday night in MVNU's when they're also redshirt freshman Clay Hilliard had 26 points on Wednesday night. He's been he's had now three straight games where he's scored at least 20 points or more. So that's going to be something on the offensive end that's going to that I think is going to be a key part of today's game. Also, Eric McLaughlin Jr. off the bench. He's been playing pretty good lately, and uh, I think he's going to be a threat off the bench this afternoon. Also, number 15 G Barica the freshman from the Netherlands, and he's played pretty good. He had three key blocks in the game against Indiana Wesleyan back on January 25th. So I think he's going to be a, a huge contributor on defense. And also Kyle Kegley, six foot eight, uh, just got back in the starting lineup in the last few games. I think he's going to be a key part, not just on the offensive end, but the defensive end as well. So it's going to be an interesting game. So those are my key stats to today's game. Looking at some Crossroads League scores from Wednesday's games. Number 18, Marion defeated number 11, Bethel, 77-71. to The Bethel Pilots just faltering in the last uh, four games. They've lost three straight games uh, being ranked inside the top 15. Now the updated polls come out on Wednesday, so I would imagine Bethel would fall quite a bit. Mary, I'm sure, will probably gain some spots as well. Also receiving votes, St. Francis defeated receiving votes, Grace, 83-79. to Number one, Indiana Wesleyan beat Goshen, 103-51. to Behind Seth Maxwell's 33-point performance, Kyle Mangus had 22 points, and MVNU defeated Taylor on the road, 91-84. to and the games coming up today, Bethel is at Taylor. Marion will be at Goshen. Grace will be at Indiana Wesleyan. Grace is a team that beat Indiana Wesleyan the first time they met earlier this year in Winona Lake. And St. Francis and Huntington were originally scheduled to play. That game has been postponed. A new date is to be determined. So that's where we are on the men's side. And regarding the Crossroads League standings uh, right now, MVNU into a three-way tie for the four, five, and six seeds with Grace and Huntington. Huntington does not play today. Grace plays at Indiana Wesleyan. Of course, Mount Vernon playing a non-conference game today. So with a Indiana Wesleyan win, uh, Mount Vernon and Huntington would be into a two-way tie for the four seed. However, Mount Vernon would hold the tiebreaker as they beat Huntington both times this season so with an indiana wesleyan win over grace mount vernon would climb up to the four seed in the crossroads league huntington would fall down to the five grace would fall down to the six they would be up one game over saint francis for the six and the seven and with another taylor loss today taylor would be five and nine and with a goshen loss taylor would officially clinch be number eight seed in the crossroads league tournament so a long ways to go yet on the men's side. It's still too wide open. Bethel and Marion right now tied at 8-4 and four for the number two and three seeds. And with Indiana Wesleyan's win over Goshen on Wednesday night, Indiana Wesleyan officially clinches the number one seed and home court advantage throughout the playoffs for the second straight year. 
So uh, having that home field advantage in Lucky Arena is going to be key, a very key part uh, for this season. Looking ahead at the women's uh, side, this is a, uh, a lot more uh, interesting, I think, uh, scores from Wednesday night's games. Number five, Marion defeated Bethel 109 to 42. Amani Guy officially had 20 rebounds. That is a team high uh, for uh, Marion, and that beat the previous high by current assistant coach Jenna Sullivan that was set back in 2014. Uh, and of course, Huntington and Spring Arbor played. Huntington defeated them 64 to 44. That, however, was played in a non-conference. Uh, game because Spring Arbor was not is not allowed to com is not allowed to compete in any more conference games. St. Francis defeated Grace fifty seven to forty five, and Indiana Westland uh, beat Goshen ninety to fifty four. And MBNU with a huge win on Wednesday night, defeating receiving votes Taylor eighty to fifty eight. And obviously, when you look at uh, the standings, it's a lot. It's pretty tight now. Today, Taylor is at Bethel. That game will kick off at one. Huntington will be at St. Francis. St. Francis is looking for the two is looking for the season sweep. MVNU is at Spring Arbor. Uh, that obviously will be played uh, in a non-conference format. Goshen is at number five. Marion Indiana Wesleyan on the road out in Winona Lake to take on the Grace Lady Lancers. Indiana Wesleyan defeated them earlier this season, 82 to 69. So Indiana Wesleyan looking for the season sweep. And when you look at the standings, with one more, with a Marion win today, Marion would officially lock the number one seed in the Crossroads League Tournament. They would have home court advantage throughout. They are 12-0 in conference play, looking to go to 13-0 with a win over Goshen today. Indiana Wesleyan, the two seed at 9-2. Taylor, the three at 9-4. Mount Vernon, the five at 7-5. Huntington, the six at 6-5. Six St. Francis, the seven, six and six. And then it's a three-game gap back to the number seven seed Goshen at three and nine, and then a, and then a two-game gap back to the number eight seed, and that will favor Grace at two and twelve, and then two game and then a, a two another two games back to Bethel at zero oh and twelve. Now Bethel, of course, Bethel has to win two out of their last uh, five in order to clinch the number eight seed. Uh, Grace two and twelve. Grace is looking really good. They they're two games behind Goshen. Goshen would have to lose out. Grace would have to win three out of their remaining four in order to get to a number seven seed in the Crossroads League tournament. And of course, Mount Vernon, Huntington, and St. Francis uh, pretty much uh, deadlocked for the four, five, and the six. And Huntington, the only way Mount Vernon can be the four seed and get their very first home playoff game is with Huntington losing three out of their last five, and St. Francis uh, also losing three out of their last five. And if Huntington loses three out of the last five, Huntington would finish at nine and seven. If St. Francis loses three out of their last five, they would finish at eight and eight. If MVNU wins three out of the last four, MVNU would finish at 10 and six. And Mount Vernon can catch Taylor for the number three seed, but the only way that would happen is if Mount Vernon wins out and Taylor loses out. If Taylor wins two out of their last three, then Taylor would officially lock uh, the officially lock no better than the, than the, or no lower than the number three seed. Indiana Westland they have to win two out of five. They would officially lock the number two seed. Mount Vernon could still get to the number two seed, but only if Indiana Westland loses out and of course Mount Vernon's next conference game is against St. Francis on Wednesday Mount Vernon trying to sweep St. Francis uh, on the season and so obviously Mount Vernon's still looking pretty good uh, to get a home conference game but obviously the standings are or or it, it's still really 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 wide open and of course after today's game we will have all the updated standings for you we hope that you'll be able to uh, listen in and uh, stay tuned uh, all the remainder of the afternoon, MVNU and Point Park coming your way in about 20 minutes from now. We will have the call of that game for you, and we hope that you will be able to, to stay tuned with us. And thanks so much for tuning in for MVNU Athletics.